dear friends welcome to this edition of uh, vbs anatoma a series of e learning videos um, for medical dental nursing physiotherapy and allied health students across the world today we are going to cover an important topic namely the gross anatomy of the ethmoidal sinus um look at this photograph um in between the eyes roughly at the level of the bridge of the nose i have marked two red zones it roughly corresponds to the location of the ethmoidal sinuses as viewed from the front actually the sinuses run posteriorly but this is the anterior view let's uh, go into the details uh, and see how <coughs> the anatomy of this region uh, has a bearing on the clinical uh, cases i am dr balasubramanyam i work here as a professor in the department of anatomy st john's medical college bangalore let's take a look at this uh, clinical case so that we will apply our anatomical knowledge in this clinical setting and uh, try to understand the subject better here is a patient who has come to the opd with complaints which more or less looks like common cold but then there are some pointers towards the ethmoidal sinus yes swelling and pain in between the eyes like i showed you in the previous uh, photograph now that's a surprising swelling and pain between the eyes fever cough malaise fatigue that's typical of any other common cold also note now he has sore throat running nose and in the name of running nose he says it's a foul foul smelling discharge you know that's something very very important there is a postnatal post nasal discharge and surprisingly a reduced sense of smell now when you look at these factors particularly the location where the swelling and pain roughly corresponds to the ethmoidal uh, sinus region now we will take a photograph we will take a look at this specimen this is a dry skull uh, very meticulously crafted to bring out the sinus anatomy in great uh, detail this is an horizontal section through the upper nose i repeat through the upper nose you can see very beautifully the uh, ethmoid sinuses of both the sides now let me point out the sinus for your if you are a first time student for your reference now those are the ethmoidal sinuses you can see ravine like or caverns or cave like pattern um, they are covered by mucous membrane but most of the current discussion is on a dry skull because it gives you more clear picture Uh, of this area now the ethmoid bone is the bone inside which these cavitations are the so called pneumatizations have taken place therefore when you look at the ethmoid bone anatomy you will notice that on the top is the cribriform plate hanging directly below it uh, is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone a component of the nasal septum on either sides are the two ethmoidal labyrinths now these two ethmoidal labyrinths have a medial wall and a lateral wall now the medial wall we have seen in the lateral wall of the nasal cavity but the lateral wall is a area is a plate which also forms the medial wall of the orbital cavity and note that lateral wall is also known as membrana papyracea now this item membrana papyracea means it's very very thin 
now we will we will have a uh, trans illuminated skull to understand how thin it is and how such a thin wall uh, can transmit infection into the orbital cavity that means if you leave an ethmoidal sinus infection unattended there is a high risk of uh, orbital cellulitis now that's the danger uh, point now that's the nasal septum this is only for orientation you see the nasal septum gives a clear division into right and left halves and how the two ethmoidal sinuses uh, are on either side of the upper end of the nasal septum remember the ethmoid bone has its own perpendicular plate as a component of the nasal septum next now we will the previous uh, uh, photograph that we saw we are now looking at it from the top and you get a, a complete aerial view of the sectioned horizontally sectioned ethmoidal sinus but then orientation is important like the upper part of the photograph is the external nose the lower part of the photograph is the foramen magnum so just remember that because unless the orientation is clear you are likely to confuse uh, the details now let's see some of the labels that's the cella tarsica and further below the black half area is the foramen magnum now that is the orbital plate of the frontal bone remember the um, in this particular view a v shaped cut has been made uh, and uh, a part of the ethmoid bone has been lifted off therefore what you see as the ethmoid architecture is actually at about 2 cm lower than the level of the orbital plate this is a very important point you need to know that means on either sides are the orbital cavities next that's the medial wall of the orbital cavity which is also as mentioned earlier the membrana papyracea uh, which is the lateral wall of the uh, ethmoidal labyrinth now that's the external nose this is only for orientation purposes now you see we will zoom in into that area a little more remember now we see the foramen magnum all has gone we have zoomed further down uh, to get better clarity let's see what all can we uh, identify in this photograph now you see right in front of the cella tarsica you can see uh, a semi partition the sphenoidal ear sinus next the ethmoid sinuses they are roughly divided into anterior middle and posterior chambers or anterior ethmoidal middle ethmoidal and posterior ethmoidal sinuses now the partitions are generally incomplete uh, the one between the middle and the posterior is considered to be a reasonably large one and a very distinct septum uh, let me give you a point of caution generally clinical books give that there are only uh, two sinuses an anterior group and a posterior group but anatomists are fond of calling it in three parts anterior middle and posterior now let's not get into the controversy as a student suffice to know that whether it is in three parts or whether it is in two parts it does not matter as long as each part has its own uh, clear drainage into the nasal cavity the problem clinical problem arises only when there is a blockage in the drainage and remember these are all i mean embryologically they are all pneumatized areas of bone and there are some sinuses where the pneumatization completes post natally uh, you know maybe up to 7 years 6 years so therefore pneumatization is a process that continues after the birth of the child for many years now in the name of pneumatization the septae that are there may, may many times many many variants are known may be incomplete so therefore we are going to stick to the three chamber architecture namely anterior middle and posterior ethmoid sinuses now that's the anterior ethmoid that's the anterior most group of the three uh, sinuses placed one behind the other next now that is the one i am now showing is the middle concha it's not the middle meat not the middle 
ethmoidal sinus. Now that concha projects as a small curtain into the nasal cavity. Remember the middle concha is a part of the ethmoid bone. Next, that clear circular cross section is the canal for the nasolacrimal duct. We can call it as the bony canal, bony nasolacrimal canal. Next, watch carefully. This posterior ethmoid sinus very clearly differentiated from the sphenoid by an excellent partition. So the posterior is very, very clear. Immediately behind and uh, medial to it, post pro medial is the sphenoidal air sinus. That's the nasal septum for orientation purposes. And let's uh, let's go through a little more now this is uh, the piece of bone remember we are seeing a horizontal section of the ethmoidal sinus viewed from above that was up to the previous slide now this slide when you make a horizontal section there is an upper piece of bone of the ethmoid now we are seeing that from below that means we have inverted the upper piece placed it on a table and we have photographed it that means uh, when you see it from below upwards, you are sh surely going to see the cribriform plate uh, very clearly. Let's try to identify that. Now, by the way, that's the anterior ethmoidal sinus, which we have already identified in the previous photograph. Right behind is the middle ethmoidal sinus. And I told you about the nasal uh, bony canal for the nasolacrimal duct. And... Uh, Perpendicular plate of the ethmoid is very clearly seen. You can see it is attached to the cribriform plate superiorly. Now, I have blown it up to give you a more detailed uh, observation of the cribriform plate. You can see the perforations in the previous photograph. Without zoom, those perforations were not so clear. But now you see I have not only zoomed it, I have also added extra light to bring out the contrast. Now, that's the cribriform plate. Next. That's the middle concha, one on either sides. Now, the anterior most component of the anterior ethmoidal sinus makes a projection in the anterior part of the upper nose. That swelling, that bony swelling is called the agar nasi. Next, that's the nasal cavity. Uh, on either sides of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. That is, the cavity is shown almost close to the root uh, roof of the uh, ethmoid, uh, of the nasal cavity. Now, you see, we, we move on. Remember, the, the main objective of this prosection is to help you identify as many structures as possible. As a result, we are going to see this in different uh, context, you know horizontal section, sagittal section, maybe if possible coronal section, maybe with a CT scan, whatever. So we want to consolidate our knowledge using as many cross sections as possible. So here is a sagittal section, rather a parasagittal section. You can see the ethmoidal sinuses in full uh, view. Um, right below the anterior cranial fossa. Let's uh, try to identify the three anterior, middle and the posterior ethmoidal sinuses uh, in this specimen also. Here, remember this is a dry skull. That's the anterior ethmoidal sinus. Very, very posteriorly behind the posterior ethmoidal sinus is the sphenoidal sinus. Frontal sinus is only being shown for uh, relativity, that means orientation purposes. Next, right in front of the sphenoidal sinus is the posterior ethmoidal sinus. You can see the septum very beautifully separating the two. And right in front of the posterior ethmoidal sinus is the middle. Therefore, we have anterior, middle and posterior ethmoidal sinuses. Now, these sinuses individually communicate with the nasal cavity. For example, the anterior and the middle ethmoid sinus open into the middle meatus. Posterior ethmoidal sinus opens into the superior meatus. And uh, at a later stage, we will discuss the 
uh, drainage of the superior sphenoidal sinus into the sphenoethmoidal recess. Now, this is yet another uh, parasagittal section, dry skull. Um, only thing is that uh, the um, lateral wall of the nasal cavity is partly intact, but the upper part of the lateral wall is gone. Therefore, the ethmoidal sinuses have come into very clear view. Let's see, can we, can we add a few points or reinforce a few points that we have already seen? Now, you see, right in front of the sphenoidal air sinus is a space called the sphenoethmoidal recess. In terms of our discussion, this space is above the superior concha. I repeat, it is above the superior concha. So, in terms of the nasal cavity, it is almost immediately below the cribriform plate as far as the uh, current uh, discussion is uh, concerned. Next, inferior meatus of the nasal cavity is shown only for orientation purposes. Superior meatus similarly, of course, there is a middle uh, meatus and a middle concha. The label is uh, on the space and we will call it as the middle meatus, but there is a concha very clearly uh, there at the edge. The cut part of it is there. Next, the middle ethmoidal sinus is, is visible, although it is uh, covered in patches by some part of the bone. Now, those are the, there are two uh, arrows. Now, they are pointing to the posterior ethmoidal sinus. The one in front, the R to the uh, left, uh, is the point where the sinus actually opens into the superior meatus of the nose. Now, sphenoidal pain, uh, once again, sphenoidal sinus is shown for orientation purposes. You can note that it is right behind the posterior ethmoidal sinus. And in fact, there is a small notch here. I hope you can see my arrow mark, moving arrow, white arrow. There, that opening is the opening of the sphenoidal sinus into the sphenoethmoidal recess. Now, that's the anterior ethmoidal sinus. Remember, there is a small septum separating it from the frontal. But when you look at many skulls, you will see that there is a lot of variation in the process of pneumatization. But these have the generally of morphological significance and also some clinical significance when you use an endoscope and try to enter one of these sinuses. So you, must, you have to remember that the pneumatization can cut across the sinuses and sometimes the frontal can be in communication with the anterior, which is quite frequent. Similarly, <clears throat> between the anterior, middle and posterior, there can be communications. <clears throat> Next, that the frontal sinus, see, is relatively huge. Now, yet another cross-section to get the orientation. Watch carefully, this is a coronal section this is a wet specimen, okay, a, a dissection specimen. We have taken a coronal section through the nasal cavity. The yellow arrow is to be kept in mind. I will, I will give you more details in due course. Now, we have seen this photograph in previous discussions of the nasal cavity. Suffice to identify the ethmoidal sinus straight. Now, that cavity, the ethmoidal sinus is immediately above and medial to the maxillary sinus. It is immediately medial to the orbital cavity. In fact, the two ethmoidal sinuses, right and left, are sandwiched between uh, the nasal cavity and the uh, respective orbital cavity. Now, that's the roof of the ethmoidal uh, sinus. It's primarily the a uh, cribriform plate, but also a small component of the adjacent uh, uh, orbital plate of the frontal bone also to be considered because it's a pneumatized area. Next, now that area is the orbit. You can see a cross section of the eyeball. Now, I told you if possible, let's have a look at the CT or some related imagery. I think this will be worthwhile and also because we have gone through this in the nasal cavity videos in the just a few weeks back, I am sure we can compare and contrast with the actual wet specimen. Let's begin. There are a number of items I am going to identify. 
some of them may not be directly or immediately relevant to the ethmoid but it will help you for the overall orientation of the photograph now first one you see mouth cavity with the tongue in both the specimens now you see i have put a white arrow for the wet specimen and a red arrow for the uh, black and white that is the ct scan the reason is when i use a white there it it doesn't stand out in contrast against this black and white photograph hence the change of color otherwise there is no significance now that's the nasal cavity both sides maxillary sinus both sides ethmoidal sinus see see the location this is why i have put this now that is the ethmoidal sinus immediately medial to the orbital cavity and um, I mean the sandwich between the nasal cavity and the orbital cavity now orbit and its contents are now shown again conchal details inferior concha middle concha superior concha now that was an overview of the ethmoid sinus we have understood that there are three components of this pneumatized area and more importantly the location is strategic more than the borders and the surfaces the location is strategic because right above is the anterior cranial fossa right Im immediately on the, on the lateral aspect is the orbital cavity separated by a very thin uh, membrana papyracea immediately below and lateral is the uh, is the maxillary ear sinus therefore it's difficult to see something called ethmoidal sinusitis in isolation invariably it is going to be associated with certain amount of nasal cavity infection therefore instead of calling it ethmoidal sinusitis infections i mean if we are talking of infections it is more of rhino sinusitis the same thing holds good for other sinuses rhino sinusitis involving the nasal cavity and one or more of the or sometimes all the adjacent paranasal sinuses now the, we'll have a glimpse of the clinical aspects of this uh, study now like for all sinuses the general theme is these sinuses can be affected by infection common viral infections or if uh, it's not controlled bacterial infections they can be affected by allergy and the third case trauma these are the three possibilities next the here is a ct scan there is a large component of maxillary sinusitis that's just passing mention but then there is also ethmoidal sinusitis particularly on the left side watch that that is the area i have marked with that's the dashed circle that is red white dashed circle it's a case of ethmoidal sinusitis uh maybe viral or bacterial important to note that the reason why is when you compare it with the right side the right side is full filled with air it's clear that means there is um it is fully clear black color whereas on the side where i have pointed out with the dashed circle there is a haziness a little gray suggesting local secretion thickening of the mucous membrane engorgement of the mucous membrane clear evidence of some kind of a sinusitis next as i told you cases of trauma needs extra attention any facial trauma you have to be extra careful because in addition to the local fracture the location being so strategic the a um, fracture involving the roof may actually establish an infection being continued into the anterior cranial fossa most more dangerously the dura and the other membranes may be ruptured once the arachnoid is ruptured the cs of rhinorrhea is is quite expectable and if it moves laterally the the infection or the fracture 
the membrana papracia being so thin obviously uh, the orbits are going to be uh, involved now this is a beautiful photograph where i have trans illuminated the um, skull this is actually a sagittal section from the other side i have put a small torch and shown a beam of light and you can see uh, we are viewing from the orbital area that means the lateral wall of the ethmoid sinus is being viewed as the medial wall of the orbital cavity and you can see because of the trans illumination how thin the bone is i repeat you can see how thin the bone that's why it is called membrana papyracea you see membrana papyracea now we have more or less completed a circuit tour of the various uh, points for the ethmoidal sinus it's time we made ourselves a little more objective and focused uh, ourselves to understand where we are yeah, a series of mcqs image based mcqs are now present i may not wait sufficiently enough for every one of you to go through it therefore my advice to students is stop the video at whichever mcq you want study it in as much detail as you want then proceed to the next mcq therefore i will be slightly fast the first mcq is there is an arrow mark there oh yeah yellow arrow now what is that pointing to i repeat what is it pointing to there are four items as choices one of them is obviously the right one think over freeze your answer answer key is available at the end of the video i can give you a clue we saw this in the previous one this is a horizontal section through the ethmoid sinuses now mcq number 2 let's start with the clue as seen earlier here is a coronal section through the head identify the pointed structure that yellow arrow what is it there are a few options which do you think is the correct answer check your answer later on next mcq number 3 again what is this pointed structure there are four sinuses mentioned so you can as well re frame this identify this sinus or which component of the main sinus something like that now think over and freeze your answer mcq number 4 a sinus is pointed out by the arrow the sinus has not been named now the question is not identify the sinus the question is where does it drain there are a few drainage spots one of them is correct think over and freeze your answer last mcq yeah yeah an area or a swelling or a landmark is being pointed out by the arrow this um is the um ethmoid bone section we are seeing it from below upwards um that's the clue i have given you think and give your answer now those are the answer keys now that was a brief conducted tour of the ethmoidal sinus and its various components um i hope you have benefited from it uh particularly because i have really really emphasized the clinical importance of this um, sinus and i also told you that pneumatization is is a is a process uh, that can cut across the sinuses and there could be lot of variability to this known pattern but as first year students generally stick to this anterior middle and posterior ethmoid sinus uh, pattern thank you wishing you all the best